everybody, my name is Isabel de Cepeguil and I'd like to welcome you on March 21st for the Multicultural Fashion Show. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, my name is uh, Tilak Tendakon. I chair the Town of Stratford Diversity and Inclusion Committee. This morning, we are here to mark the one of the most important, significant, and historic events observed by many countries, many nations. In 1966, the United Nations General Assembly first proclaimed March 21st as the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. Our country, Canada, was one of the first countries in the world to support the UN Declaration, committing through the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms to develop and promote universal respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. Here at the town of Stratford, we as a member of the Canadian Coalition of Municipalities Against Racial Discrimination annually organize different programs and events to recognize this special day. Some of you may remember last few years we had guest speakers we had special speeches. We also had some panel of experts to talk about the importance of eliminating racial discrimination. This year, we have a very exciting event happening this morning. I just want to mention we also have a well-known community leader, Dr. Umesh Gupta, is going to speak about uh, racial harmony and valuing diversity in our community. Following very exciting multicultural fashion show, I'm sure you will enjoy the diversity of vibrant and colorful fashion, including cultural models from different countries. We have India, we have Thailand, Philippines, Sri Lanka, our mainstream community groups, Scottish, Irish, and so on. On behalf of the town, I'd like to welcome everyone here. I actually came here just as a, a resident of the town, uh, and then they asked me to speak. And the reason I came is, is diversity and multicultural is, is uh, dear to my heart. I actually am not the counselor on the multicultural, on the diversity uh, committee, but I asked to sit in on some of the meetings because it is that important to me. Uh, I grew up in Montague. We didn't have multiculturalism in our school. And uh, when I went to visit Japan, and it was supposed to be a visit, I stayed 10 years because everything was so different. I just enjoyed everything. <coughs> Actually, came back. I got a bit of cold here. <coughs> Took the water and to take it up. I came back with a Japanese wife, two Japanese children, have a third child since we came. And I think that's why it's so important to me. Is, is I, I believe I wouldn't have came back 20 years ago because the island uh, is not as uh, open two different cultures as it is now, but that's changed so much, and I just enjoy seeing all the children playing together. The first year I came back, thanks. Um, the first year I came back, I did a little bit of substituting it at all the different schools to see what the schools were like, and I wanted to go to as many schools as possible. And West Royalty had all the flags of all the different nationalities there, and I spoke in Stratford, and I told them how much that impressed me to see all the different flags, and now I'm happy to see the Stratford Elementary School has all the different flags when you come in from every culture of all the different children. So I'm just happy to be here. I'm enjoying just seeing uh, all the uh, clothing around 
the stage right now and I'm looking forward to the fashion show. And on behalf of the town of Stratford, thank you all for coming out. Well, thank you for being here today, and uh, we're going to get started, I guess. So I'd like to welcome you. At, at least you can see what she looks like. It's Kim. Kim, come join us, please. <laughs> so this is Kim. So the first that we have, um, it's the Asian Cultural Artistical Group of PEI. And uh, the owner, director, and choreographer of the costume and design is Bing Yao. And uh, we have uh, a, few, uh, a few of them uh, coming up. We're going to get them ready. We have the uh, Chinese ethnic costume. And there are 56 ethnic minorities in China. Just a little bit of that. And we're going to get them to come. I don't know if there is a. That's right. This is Xixi. Xixi is here. And uh, yeah, go ahead. And as, as she walks, I can uh, tell you a little bit about it. It's a uh, Mongolian dress feature. Mongolian costumes include robe, belt, boots, jewelry, and so on. And the Mongolian dress has its own aesthetic characteristic of Mongolian, with special preferences for bright, shiny colors, such as white and blue, like this one. In addition to the traditional Mongolian costume style, it includes an ample gown and loose girdle, which can reflect the curves and human body, but also reflects a kind and generous, well, and noble personality. This is Shishi. this is a beautiful costume that you're wearing today. Do you want to tell me a little bit about it, or maybe what's about it that you, you really enjoy wearing it? I just like the dangling here. Like, when you when we dance, we tend to like do this like um, to mimic the birds. And then when you do that, like you can see, it, like it's really decorating. And is this uh, something you'd usually wear when you're performing, or would you wear it in social occasions or at, at um, festivals? No, it's just for the dance. Just for dancing. It's beautiful. Thank you. Our second one is Wan Xin. So. It's a clothing decoration. It's influenced by the culture of the western region of Xinjiang, Hohu. They love bright colors and all have to wear the flower hat. Isn't it beautiful? I personally love it. We tried to sneak she was away. Trying to escape. <laughs> I really, uh, the hat that you have on, can yeah. you tell me a little bit about it? Well, as you can see, the braids are fake, because obviously my hair is not that long, but I love this hat because you see a string tied to it, so then when you dance, the hat won't fall off, and like the unique colors just like brightens up everything. Like it's just, I love the colors. And again, you'd wear this usually when you're performing yeah. or dancing? Yeah, dancing and performing. And, and what is the type of dance that you would be performing when you wear this? Um, the Xinjiang dance. So like there's many movements about like to move your neck mm -hmm. and your hands and your arms and, and it's beautiful because when you twirl it, yeah. it's, it's very good. Yeah. Thanks very much for showing it to us today. Our third one is Yan Jin. So Yan Jin wears a, clothes, a clothing from Dai and the Thai peoples of China. Although they are officially recognized as a single people by the Chinese state, the Dai people form several distinct cultural and linguistic groups. And you see that yellow, right? Just reminds me of the sun. This is Yanji. So it looks like you are a dancer as well? Yes. Nice. And is, is that why you have the peacock feathers on your hat? Yes. And how long have you been taking part in that type of dance? Um, like a year or so. And do you have a number of different costumes that you wear with different colors, or do you usually wear this sort of costume? Well, yeah. I usually wear this in the dance. It's very pretty. Thank you. One is Jian Jian. So it's a Taiwan 
Kaohsiung nationality. Kaohsiung nationality is one of Chinese 56 ethnic minority groups as well as Taiwan indigenous people. In a traditional rituals festival, many dancers work together to form a circle, dancing and singing, to show the strengths of ethnic solidarity. The dance movements are usually rhythmic, stamping, such as jumping and waving. I think the favorite thing about this outfit is you can hear you coming. I think I might get one for my children so I know what they're up to. Do you like the do you like the jangling as well? Yeah. And like um Gaoshan is like some place that they live in mountain and they're very strong so like these. So they're sort of power movements. Yeah. yeah. And and how often do you um, dance and perform these movements wearing this uh, outfit? Like in my dance class every uh, Saturday. Oh, great. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, one year. And is that the only time you get to wear these beautiful costumes? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> That's too bad. They're very beautiful. Thank you. The next one is Ling Min. Ling Min. Chang Sam evolved, evolved from old clothing of Manchu. Starting from 30 Chinese, it has almost become a standard of Chinese women clothing. It went on to become popular for social outings as well as activities. Later, the Ki Pao also spread abroad and for the women to follow. The dress has simple lines, is graceful, generous, and is also recognized as a symbol of oriental traditional dress. This is actually a bit from I have one that is almost a thing. Thank you, Lin Min. Uh, she said that this is um, often recognized as a traditional oriental dress, and it is what comes to mind. Yeah, I think it's very perfect. It's very important. Can you tell me a little bit about the fan that you're holding? Perfect, that would be great, thank you. Um, the fan is like, you can see a, a traditional Chinese lady. So usually the fans will have many different like, a natural, like natural like flowers and trees and usually like women. So, and there's like letters, characters, Chinese characters on it. So. Very nice, thank you very much for joining us today. The last one is Bing. And I was introducing at the beginning Bing Yao, so here she is. So those are you, Yi costumes. Young men and women were wearing clothing with many colors, including red, yellow, green, orange, pink, and other contrasting colors. They also have a wide variety of decorative patterns. Yi girls like to wear embroidered clothing. The dress sleeves are embroidered with gold, red, purple, green, and other colors pattern. The collar has fine silver bubbles. The dress is also a ye girl good luck charm. Long skirt features layers of fold commonly known as freely with multiple pleats. Her wrist is adorned with gold, silver, bronze, jade, and stone bracelet. <coughs> That's beautiful name. Now Bing has, uh, she choreographs and arranges a lot of the costumes for all the girls that you've seen today uh, and she does a fantastic job of uh, creating dances and uh, dressing them appropriately to uh, be appropriate for the dances that they're doing um, and we're really appreciative that she takes part in a lot of our cultural events. Is there anything you'd like to say about any of the costumes today? Thank you everybody. Thank you. Enjoy my culture. Thank you. So we had that, but before we change country, because I, uh, I kind of like that country too, before we change country, I'd like to let, because you may be wondering, where is she representing today? I, was, I didn't want to be left out. 
I wasn't going to MC and not wear something, so at least I'm here to represent Senegal. I won't just uh, walk around, but at least you know that he's from Senegal. <laughs> so now we're going to move on and we're going to have uh, Sharda Gupta, as long as uh, Pooja Mandal. So it's, uh, the name of the outfit is, uh, yeah. So this is Sharda. This is Alwar Gupta. So this is Salwar Kuta. Yeah, I did not give anything to return because I wasn't planning to come. I'm not feeling very good. But anyway, I'm going to walk. We appreciate walk. that you're here. And yeah. you know what? If you just want to go just there, you don't have to go all the way down. So this is Charlotte Salwar Kuta. And it's typical of the northern province of Uttar Pradesh in India, East India. And you see the beautiful color, like it's it's purple, but a, a shiny and bright one. And the nice touch with the golden shoes and the... Uh, she's, uh, she's fashion, she has the fashion touch, Mrs. Gupta. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I just have to say, I love the coordination of the shoes and the handbag and the embroidery. It's absolutely beautiful. And with so much snow around us these days, it's so nice to see all these beautiful colors. Something special, these clothing. See, I don't have to wear any jewelry, everything here. Yes. Everything here. So I'm set up with the clothes to everything wear. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's called dedication. She wasn't feeling well, but she came today. She wanted to make sure you see her outfit. So this is Pooja Mandal. <coughs> so that's definitely uh, like the color. And you see the difference, you know, we uh, know the green, the purple, but this one is definitely a different one. And the uh, tone are so nice. So I just love it. Yes. Again, it's so beautiful with all the um, the details and the embroidery, and you can see there's some sequins. Um, is there anything that you would like to say about it, or or that you why you enjoy uh, wearing some of these traditional um, outfits? Um, I don't know. I just like wearing the festival stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't really have anything to wear. Yeah. It's. Uh, I wish we uh, could see these. Um, these clothing around the community uh, more days of the year than just on uh, festivals and uh, different events. It would be make our community so much uh, brighter and, and colorful. So thank you so much for coming today. It's very beautiful. Thank you. So now that we traveled from China all the way to East India, we're going to go to Scotland. So, who we are representing today is Mr. Cecil MacPhail. Thank you for being here. So, it's a kilt dress, and um, all Scottish uh, functions, they wear them at, uh, he would wear, he says he wears them all the time. I asked him why. He said any opportunity he has, he wears them. So, but traditionally it would be uh, Scottish functions and social gathering. So, chief of Caledonian Club and the MacPhail clan. I'm going to make them go again. <laughs> I'm always envious because I find them brave to wear well when it's cold like that. Today is not too bad, but really I'm always like, they're brave. So I'm going to hand over the mic to Cecil because he has a number of items uh, with his outfit that he's going to tell us about. So. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm glad to be here this morning, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank Isabel for that nice introduction. Very nice, and uh, I'm wearing a Scottish outfit. It's called Scottish Highland Dress, and it's uh, the national dress of Scotland. And if you're going to any famous events in Scotland, I suggest that you get a kilt. But the one I'm wearing is a MacPhail kilt. That's our clan. Clan is the name for family, and each clan in Scotland has their own tartan, different colors, different styles. And what I'm wearing along with a lot of accompaniment goes with that, but this is called a sporan. Now sporan is, the word for sporan is 
purse. So naturally you carry in your spore and what you would carry in your purse. But before we had the, the modern uh, kit purse, we had the, the old fashioned spore and it was just a, a bag with a string around it. And when the Scottish people were out in the hills, they wanted to take something with them to eat. So they filled it with oatmeal. Because you know they're pretty good to eat oats over in Scotland. And uh, they would uh, make their own porridge while they're out in the hills herding the sheep. And uh, the spore that I'm wearing today is the one you wear in daytime. This one when I'd wear at night, if you're going to a ball or a dance, it's the fancy spore where you put all your money in this one. <laughs> We're going to leave Scotland to go to Sri Lanka. And our next. Uh, our next is Satsara oh, Pahala Kedara. So the name of the outfit is Kandian Sari. It's worn for uh, special occasions, wedding and ceremonies, and virtual cultural fashion shows. It's a traditional dress for a Sri Lankan women. Again, another beautiful uh, dress today, and it's called a sori, is that correct? Yes. yes. And is there um, many different kinds of suris? Uh, yeah, there's like two, this one and another one which kind of has the influence of Indian stuff. I choose to wear this as a short. <laughs> it looks very beautiful on you. And again, there's some um, nice sequins detailing and it's uh, very shimmery. Yes. Would you typically wear this one for evening events or any time of day? Uh, this is the traditional ladies' dress for Sri Lankan women. And you especially wear that on weddings and really special parties. And sometimes teachers in the government schools wear that. It's just like a common law. I can only imagine how beautiful a Sri Lankan wedding would be with the whole uh, group of people dressed in beautiful stories like this. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. So now I'm going to call on your memory. I'm going to ask you, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but one of the outfit actually that was from uh, East India, do you remember it was Mrs. Sharada Gupta? And the link is just a segue for the next presenter who is to be Dr. Umesh Gupta, the husband of Mrs. Gupta. I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about him because I actually know him. I'm sitting on a board with the International Friendship Association and uh, Dr. Gupta actually turns out he knows my mother-in-law. So um, I've been uh, with him on the board for many years and it's always a great pleasure. He lives in Sherwood and uh, is there always uh, Great to share uh, food from uh, East India, especially Mrs. Gupta. And uh, I'd like to welcome you for your presentation. He's going to do a presentation for us today. Dr. Gupta. But unfortunately, human hatred can never be totally eliminated. However, it can be controlled to a degree. Now at this time, I would like to share with you my own experience from 1958 when I see 80% or 90% of you were not even born I came to the United States to do my PhD degree two months later there was a conference in Kentucky which is a state just south of Indiana so I had an opportunity to go because my professor wanted me to go there. So there were two cars went there from the university. And uh, what I should mention here that uh, in the 1950s, there was a line which ran along the 39th parallel and it was known as Mason-Dixon line. So the uh, state south of it, there was a discrimination, and in the north, the states were free. So when we got, this was a place in Kentucky, it was called as a Mason-Dixon line, and in the south, you had the states like Alabama, Tennessee, and uh, Kentucky, these were the, where the racial discrimination was. 
And in the north, the states which were free, like Indiana, Illinois, and um, Michigan, and so on. So when we got to the hotel, where the conference was being held, my colleagues, and I must plead ignorance, I knew nothing about, uh, about discrimination, or racial discrimination, I should say, but three years, which I stayed in the United States, I learned a lot about it. So these people told me that not to go to the hotel alone, you come with the group. I said, so they got busy with talking, so I went inside the hotel, not knowing <laughs> what might happen. So I went to the hotel, and I went to the reception desk, and uh, I said, I have a reservation here. And the girls standing there, I just looked this way and that way, and I didn't know what was going on. And then I saw a person came from behind me, he went and registered, then another person came and registered. Then I thought there was something wrong, but in the meantime, my uh, group, which I was traveling with by car, they came and they said, Umesh, come here for a second. So they took me behind, and then they got registered and everything. And then they later explained to me, they said, sorry, we should have told you a little better. But we did tell you that you come with us rather than go by yourself. So that was the first time that I experienced racial discrimination. So I want to thank you very much for inviting me and uh, thank you ladies and gentlemen for listening to me. Thank you very much Dr. Gupta. Thank you. It is a multicultural fashion show, but there is a meaning behind it, and I think that it didn't start today, it started yesterday, and thank you for your insights and your message and for sharing your personal story. I think that it's an important message that we can all share. We shared it yesterday, we're sharing it today, we can share it tomorrow. And I think that it's all about knowing more about each other. And I find that I'm really proud to be on PI, which is a great multicultural place, and the, the diversity that's just uh, grown throughout the years, and ever since I've been on the island since 2007, I definitely turn around each corners and you find yourself in different places and you feel at home because you're not feeling like you're anywhere else. So I'm calling PI home and I'm proud of it. So I am really thankful that you're here today and share those event, that event with us. And make sure you spread that message too because I think that we all islanders, whether we are come from away, islander by choice, I'm an islander by choice, and, uh, and that's that. So what we're gonna have at this time, and uh, we're gonna have a break, 15 minute break, and we'll uh, gather here again. All the, 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 the people that shared with us their traditional outfits, we'll have a picture at the end, so uh, make sure you don't leave or you don't uh, change your outfit. So we'll have a picture at the end, but right now we're gonna have a break. And uh, please, there are some refreshments at the back, and use that time to just mingle and uh, ask more questions to people that you saw this morning, and try to meet a new face that you haven't talked to, and uh, that's that. So we'll see you back in 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Close by, big smiles. Here we come, big smile. Okay, she has to. And then after Winston is done, just look at Winston up there. Over here, please. On three. One, two, three. Five. Cheese. One. Yay! Woo! They're cutest. <laughs> wow, very nice.
always food, nice and colorful. Look at that. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, very nice, thank you. Big smile, can you look at me? Very nice smile, thank you. Mm, eat it. Mm. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to start again and we're going to have our next one is a Filipino-Canadian group of PEI. So for the next one, we're going to have, first we're going to have Mark, as far as I know, Mark Rojas. Oh, look at that. Everyone's in the down. So it's Baron Tagalong. It's a Philippine national traditional attire. And you're going to have a So they're made with different kinds of fabrics. The most expensive ones are made with uh, piña. Piña pineapples leaf like the fibers. Thank you so much for coming today. And I think you've been practicing your walk a little bit. <laughs> um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what you're wearing today? Yeah, it's made of piña fiber. And uh, because of the dwindling of people who weave piña fiber in the Philippines, it kind of costs more expensive if you buy one. And it's uh, considered national costume in the Philippines and mostly wear by for, uh, informal events and weddings. And are the sunglasses a traditional part of the outfit? No. <laughs> I just want to make everyone happy. Thanks for having us here. So something I really like are the buttons are, are beautiful. They um, look like a clear uh, glass or? Yeah, it's just a plastic one, but uh, it makes uh, make it more attractive for, for when the lights. That's great, thanks so much. Yeah. So that was Mark Rojas. Next we have Cedar Lumbao Junior. <laughs> so this is Cedar. And Kuti, another natural fiber, and banana silk. And there are very special materials of sheer fabric used mostly for formal occasions. <laughs> Now, because the uh, fabrics are made of natural materials, does that make them cooler or more comfortable oh, to wear? Yeah, it's more comfortable. You know, this, uh, this uh, cloth is made from pineapple fiber. So usually this is our national costume in the Philippines. So uh, this is where by uh, politicians in the Philippines, most, mostly or also on the wedding ceremony. Yeah. And I noticed that there's a lot of detail in yeah, your yeah. shirt. And also this is a hand embroidered. Hand embroidered, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And, and uh, can you get this uh, kind of clothing around here, or do you have to bring it in from the Philippines? Uh, this bring from the Philippines, yeah. That's too bad. I'd like to go get one for my husband. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming Thanks today. So <laughs> Next one is Maria Felicidad Ganga. Mm -hmm. The best for, the, for last. We'll say that. So Maria Felicidad is wearing the Ternal Barang Tagalog with butterfly sleeves. The fabric is from banana silk. All three are handmade, hand embroidered, and use natural colors. The stage is yours, Maria. Good one. Very beautiful. Thank you for coming today. This is the Ternal. We use it for formal occasions. As you could see, it's. Um, Spanish inspired because we were under the Spanish for decades and it's hand embroidered. And, and do a lot of people um, take up the tradition of hand embroidery? Uh, yeah. Is it something that um, children would often study uh, as they grow up and learn from uh, some of their grandparents and parents? Not now because we now have the machines and they're, it's mass for mass production we have machines that do the embroidery, but for the more expensive and more elegant, 
it's hand embroidered green sequins. It's very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Maria Felicidad Ganga. Next we have Erica. Erica Ganga. So Erica is wearing battle at Saya. Filipino women love to wear colorful attire. Bado is a blouse and saya is a skirt. During the colonization era of almost 400 years in the Philippines, a long wrap around skirt was developed. It's made of sheer fabric and it's compressed of skillful embroidery. With the butterfly sleeves in the inner turtle that has gained a lot of popularity in the modern times among the Filipino women. What is it that you like uh, about the uh, outfit that you're wearing today? Um, I like all the colors and the details in the outfit. And when would you uh, wear something like this? Um, back in the days, it used to be the common outfit for the Filipinos, for the ladies. But now we still wear it like in programs and events. Special occasions? Yeah. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. Well, anyway. Last but not least, we have Rowena Stewart. So, colorful. Rowena is wearing the modern Philippine turno, greatly influenced by the modern fashion from the Americans that has dominated the Philippines since 19, 1898. But the European touch is still predominant. New kinds of fabric are used, but the embroidery is still very... <laughs> she has to go a second time. <laughs> Embroidery is still very prominent as the main accent of the turno, a very Filipino design. I love the colors, it makes me think that spring is on the way. Yeah, thank you. Um, now, the, the piece you have on the top, is that attached to the dress or is it something that you. It's just a top that we, uh, we usually use this in the Philippines, I say hand embroidered and made of sequins and beaded and it's a handmade from the Philippines. Uh, it's a top, we just put it there under the dress. So you can dress up any outfit? Yeah, any outfit. That's why we call this as Philippine modern turn which is influenced by Americans but still with European, predominant by European countries. And a handbag, you really got to touch a style there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because we Filipinos love to carry a purse and it's a handmade. Uh, cr one of the source of livelihood in the Philippines is making a handmade craft. So this is from the Philippines. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we just left the Philippines. And now where are we going? Take a guess. <laughs> oh my goodness, somebody knew the program. <laughs> so yes, we are going to Thailand and we have Nyorn and Bangkra. So Nyorn. And what she's wearing is a traditional Thai outfit. It's a Thai jacket. I love the red, and you see how bright. Thank you. And the pattern and the belt. I'm noticing the belt. Mm, where did you get that? <laughs> this is absolutely beautiful. I love the, um, the you know, we call the body. And so where would you have um, gotten this outfit? Okay. Uh, this dress we brought from Thailand. So it's not something that you could find here in one of our corner stores? No. <laughs> not yet, maybe someday, hopefully. <laughs> and and so the jewelry that you are wearing, can you tell me a little bit about that? It's made from gold and some jewelry. Different colors and stones of it. Thank you for taking part today. You look absolutely beautiful. That was Nyon. So it was, it's, uh, so the next one is Bankra. Bankra. It's called Rachapatan. The blue, the white, beautiful mix. So they wear them usually at weddings and traditional performances. Thank you, Bankro.
there's one thing that I'd like to share because uh, we have a celebrity in the house. Did you know? Who is that celebrity in the house? This is Mr. Tilak Tilikon. Did you know that he was selected by the Canadian Immigrant Magazine as a candidate for a top 25 immigrant award for 2015? That is amazing. People's Choice Award, and so in order for Tilak to, to make it into the top 25, he needs votes. He needs you. So you can go to CanadianImmigrant.ca or BC Top 25 between now and May 11, 2015, and vote for Tilak. I don't have to get the right? No, you don't have to get the You're good, you're good. But you can also visit the Town of Stratford website for more information and the link. So congratulations again to uh, Tila. And like we need each other to make a great experience here on PEI, he needs you to make it to the top 25 and win. So help him out. Congratulations Tila again. So we're going to continue and we let, we live in Thailand and now we're moving on to Bhutan. So the next one we have Lok Darji. There you go. So it's an outfit from Nepal. It's, a, it's called Nepal. And it's mainly wore in weddings. I think they didn't see. You, you can just go back and show them again. <laughs> Don't be shy. question about your hat and um, do you typically uh, wear a hat with this sort of outfit? Um, I have a uh, metal dress with a man. Thank you. So we had a chance thankfully to just, uh, hello, are they waiting at me? Hi. I think we had a great chance and I'm glad that we got the opportunity to have that picture just to memorize the event and have everybody got in the picture. I bet some of you wish you had an outfit to be on the picture, but that wasn't the day for you. But I'm glad that you were able to come here and, uh, and have that opportunity to see uh, different cultures and have a taste of it. And then you'll have more opportunities. There are neighbors, so make sure you make your way and uh, get to know them even more. I'm really glad I was here today. I'm Isabel Dasmagil. It was a great pleasure to be your host. Thank you very much, Isabel. Uh, what a great job. Excellent event. Excellent event. We learn about different cultures. We learn about our neighbors who are coming from different countries. And we learn about different cultural aspects, costumes, dresses, wedding dresses, ceremonial dresses, and so on. As I mentioned earlier, the town of Stratford, Diversity and Inclusion Committee, we do our best to raise the understanding and awareness of the value of our diversity. So today's event was specially marked to commemorate the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. Uh, Isabel, Pat, and Brittany, you did an excellent job. And we also have to uh, thank all the ethno-cultural groups, I know key individuals from our uh, community groups, the various uh, uh, multicultural associations, and they participated even, uh, they encouraged their presenters uh, to uh, attend this event. We had uh, display booths from Human Rights Commission, and we also had uh, display booth from the PEA Muslim Association, and thank you very much Najam, and thank you very much everybody for displaying, uh, for setting up your display booth. Bye bye. <laughs> It's one of those things where I know where I'm from and I know where I'm uh, like my heading in life. And I, and I just found my place here and discrimination is around me, it's around us. I'm not the only one, but I think it's about responding to it and not letting it affect you.